In this episode, I make a pen disappear. Oh no, I lost my pen. Have you got the pen? You got the pen, I don't have Oh a pen. man, what do I do with my pen? And I refuse to eat a Skittle. Skittle? No, oh, thank you. In this video, I take my stepfather Phil and my little brother Liam on a sightseeing flight to beautiful Muskoka, Ontario. We flew east out of the Toronto city centre zone, then north to Muskoka, and back to Toronto for an early dusk approach over the harbour. But before we got going, I had to get a few piloty things out of the way. So we want to confirm that the flaps are up. We're going to put the fuel in the right tank. Flops up. Okay, thank you, Liam. <laughs> uh, now we're going to get our ATIS. Landing and departing runways 26 check, and check, check, 24. Check, check. Caution, bird activity at the airport. Inform ATC that you have information Lima. Uh, th oh, wait, why is this on? Being the first time flying these two, I made sure that they were really comfortable about possibly dying. I think if we're not off the ground by about Foxtrot or shortly after, we're going to abort takeoff. Okay? Just because, like, we should be off the ground by then. Right. If we're not, there's... Yeah, it's not good. Um, and if, when we're in the air, like, if, if there's an engine failure so after takeoff, if we're under 500 feet above the ground, we're going to ditch. Right. And Did you bring your swim trunks, Liam? Yeah, <laughs> I'm a lifeguard, sorry. It's important to note, I'm editing out about 99% of the boring. The checklist items. The procedural stuff. If you're into that kind of thing, unfortunately, this isn't one of those videos. And not what this channel is about. However, I've included some links to a bunch of my favorites in the description below. One thing worth noting, and I'm sure every pilot would agree, keep your cockpit organized. At this point, holding short of the runway, I learned a lesson. So, where is the... Oh no, I lost my pen. Have you got the pen? You got the pen, I don't have Oh man, what do I do with my pen? Is there a pen back here? Uh, what do I do with the pen? You probably sat on it. And as you can see, the Dash 8 in front of me is entering the runway, and I'm still looking around for the pen. Maybe I was in a rush, or maybe my pen fell into a wormhole into another dimension. Regardless, lesson learned. This is an example of how not to hand over control of an aircraft. You want to hold on to this for now? Okay, now we're banking, so you want to... Okay, and then, see that tells you you're going up? Yeah. So you want to go down a little bit? Oh, it's quite sensitive. It is, yeah. And now we're going down. Okay, so there's traffic in Port Perry, 
heading back to Oshawa. Usually a lot of training flights around here. Yeah. At this point, the air traffic got really busy. Phil sets it up nicely. How far do you get away from the tower to lose that communication? Or do you always have communication? We, we, no, we've lost it. Up. When he said cleared on route, and I switched over, that's when he was like, okay, hey, you're clear as a So zone. you're just on a, like an open channel now. Coincidentally, right after that explanation, I had to put it to practice. So what's happening here is I've got a plane flying toward me at the same altitude. He's right about here. But I can't see him, and he can't see me. We have to rely on verbal communication to not hit each other. Now I have to turn north at where I think our paths will cross, essentially creating the aviation version of turning left at an intersection. Only we're both blind, with good hearing. So we sorted out how not to hit each other. I like when that happens. It was at this point where Phil shared something very important with us. I see cows. And he may have been just a little nervous about hitting other planes. Then he shared what I could only describe as a very English observation about the ground below. Everything looks so neat and clean and tidy. Everything looks manicured and... Yeah, it's a weird perspective. And tidy. I know, right? Maybe you can't see the junk, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> arriving in Muskoka, an iconic area of Ontario's cottage country, in a popular destination for mosquitoes who have been drawn by the blood of seasonal residents and tourists since the late 1800s. Then a tried to commit suicide by flying into us. After being carved out of the forest as a make-work project for Depression-era men in the 30s, the Muskoka Airport was put to good use during World War II when the Royal Norwegian Air Force operated their pilot training here. They called it Little Norway. Back then, thousands of Norwegians escaped to Canada to train as pilots and aircrew before heading back to the fight in Europe. There's a memorial here that commemorates their service and sacrifice. It's also worth mentioning, in 1942, they moved the base here from the original location, the Toronto Island Airport, which coincidentally is where I did my pilot training. 
I didn't realize until making this video that we literally connected these two historical airports with this flight. I've included some links to videos about it in the description below. After visiting the memorial, it was time to head home and do some flying of our own. Not because we have to, but because we can. Is that the ejector button? Yeah, that's it. Shit. I didn't have the heart to tell him. Yeah, okay. He's just back there crunching on the crisps. <laughs> oh, you guys are holding out on me. <laughs> Shit. Were you talking to the aliens? I think we are. There's VFR cruising altitude, so if you're going from zero all the way to 179 degrees... Remember when I said I wasn't going to gonna include the boring stuff? Listen, man. Hey, yo. So as the sun went down, we just flew through the sky. magic. Until I stepped on a radio call. Then I missed a radio readback. And avoided lots and lots of air traffic. As we landed, the cockpit was finally silent. I enjoyed making this video. If you enjoyed watching, hit the like button. I'll be making more, so please subscribe. <laughs>